Hello to everyone, my name is Elwin Woman and I will present what are knowledge graphs and how they can support under resourced languages. The outline of my presentation will start with why knowledge graphs in under resourced languages, why they are important, how we can build knowledge graphs, what we have done so far, and what are the next steps. So, why knowledge graphs and under resourced languages? Under resourced languages are languages that have a limited amount of resources, struggle to be supported by the pace of technology, are marginalized by society, minoritized by dominant languages, and are excluded from decision making processes. When we talk about the technological aspect, there exist some fonts and keywords for under resourced languages, but they are not fully supported. They are also not fully supported by NLP tasks. There are not graphical user interfaces for those uh, under-resourced languages and studies shown that most, most of the languages that has been uh, worked on or researched on uh, is English. So when we talk about under-resourced languages becoming dependent and dominant languages, we are talking about those languages are borrowing words. They are also not uh, they are not official languages in their own territories. As you see in the image, there is a group of Quechua people that are taught in Spanish language. So they also, the undersourced languages and their community suffers as a consequence of colonialism, so they are minoritized and they are excluded from decision-making processes. As you can see in this uh, left side image, there are um, Quechua women community in the Andes and they are basically just in the Andes without technology, without connections, without internet and they are living their own traditions up there. So knowledge graphs, what are those? Are very large semantic nets that integrate various and heterogeneous information sources to help represent knowledge and language of certain domains. For instance, if we have the statement the University of Innsbruck is located in the city of Innsbruck, we can convert this or we can take this as a simple statement or triple as we call it in computer science field. A triple is composed by the subject predicate object and we can recall from our statement that the subject is the University of Innsbruck, the predicate is located in and the object is the city of Innsbruck. So if we understood this, then a triple understood by the human could be this simple statement and if we want to machines to understand this structure as well we can just use some standards ontologies and vocabularies in order to define those uh, words or entities or objects so knowledge graphs are also can be easily build so you have a basic statement Anna is enrolled in a specific course and then we have more statements about this objects for instance for Anna this person uh, has a birthplace in the Puno city Anna is enrolled in a specific course the age of Anna and so on we can still create more statements about this uh, persons and entities in general and we can generate a knowledge graph at the same time knowledge graphs can be created independently so this would be a different knowledge graph this would be a different knowledge graph but they still the standards and the ontologies they use on top can allow the linking of these entities. For instance, Luis is still a person, so it is defined in a different ontology. And also the Puno, it's referring to a Luis, uh, has a birthplace in Puno, and they both are the same. So we can interconnect these graphs that have been created separately, and this is the beautifulness of knowledge graphs, because you can have a structured knowledge, descriptive uh, information that can be interlinked between them. So what makes magic to knowledge graphs? They are widely used by technology companies, tech companies and also for academia and organizations. For instance, Facebook has its own knowledge graph about uh, social and profiles. Google has a knowledge graph for the for storing the human's knowledge. Amazon has a knowledge graph, the product knowledge graph, so it stores all the products that are on the web and on their website. Airbnb has a knowledge graph for the uh, properties and hotels and 
and uh, places and also Wikipedia has its own knowledge graph called Wikidata so knowledge graphs are very powerful and they are serving those big companies and organizations so why not we can use for under such languages right and they are well developed and they are well established because they also have some standards they adopted some standards uh, recommendations and good practices so they develop a lot of technology methods and tools around this knowledge graph so this is the resource description framework the schema.org is well used for search engines a sparkle and graph TV are, are part of the graph databases that allows to store and represent uh, knowledge graphs and if we talk about lexicographical data we can also talk about ontolex lemon ontology for representing lexicographical data and in the other side also it's wikibase a, a, a platform and a service that can allow us to store and host no, our own knowledge graph so how we can build knowledge graphs and how we can do it for under source languages so there is a process model for creating a knowledge graph so it's mainly four steps knowledge creation knowledge hosting knowledge curation and knowledge deployment following these four steps we will allow to create a graph representation of our entities of our languages of our knowledge this knowledge graph will allow in the future develop some applications on top like uh, search engines, NLP tools, user interfaces, open educational resources, dialogue systems and also could act as a common sense layer for responsible AI. So in the case of uh, uh, Quechua language we build the Quechua base which is a Quechua language knowledge graph. So following our process model we start with a creation in that step we start to identify sources for instance dictionaries and vocabularies we collect this runes in the dictionary which has translations of words to English German Italian and Spanish also those words has a link to other Quechua variants so uh, so the Quechua language is a family of languages not only one is one language and there are also links to another uh, languages there are informations about adjectives adverbs pronouns suffix verbs and more then we start to model in this uh, information of this knowledge so we take the ontolex lemon and the wikidata ontology for lexicographical data where we can define uh, we, we, where we can describe a lexeme so we state the lemma then uh, which category it belongs in which language we are talking if it's a variant we also um, it also allows the possibility to add more variants and dialects of the language then it also allows to describe forms and senses in the hosting phase we have to make sure once we have our knowledge gap where we host it where we serve our knowledge so in that sense we went to um, a wiki base platform which is which allows which is the base basically of the wikidata um, knowledge graph so basically it powers the wiki wikidata knowledge graph and it also it's available for anyone if if you want to create your own knowledge graph for your language you it, it's accessible in wikibase.cloud so you can have a look there so we host our knowledge in this uh, in the wikibase ecosystem and then we have a nice representation as a Wikipedia page where we can uh, store and represent or visualize the knowledge that we have so you also apart from the graph itself graph representation you can have content and natural language text uh, to describe your project uh, your ontology modeling what the, what vocabulary or resources have you used for building this knowledge graph and so on then in the third step which is the curation of the knowledge graph in this case of the Quechua base there are a lot of tools that have been developed among the Wikimedia ecosystem and open source and open data as well so we have this open refine tool that allows to reconcile or basically uh, helps to uh, avoid duplicates into your uh, knowledge graph for instance if you want to insert a lexicographical data and then you already insert the verbs and then someone wants to insert 
a, a, a verb that is already existing on your knowledge graph, then Open Refine allows you to discover it and prevent that there are duplicates in your knowledge graph. And also, the time that you want to enrich your knowledge graph, you can also link those uh, entities or your knowledge graph, the data that is on, on your knowledge graph, to another knowledge graphs like uh, Google or uh, Wikidata or DBpedia and so on. Then there are also in the process of curation there is also easily accessible or usable uh, importing tools for um, ingesting information into the knowledge graph. So sometimes you can ingest it manually, but also sometimes you can ingest it in a bunch of uh, a data set and ingest it or import it into your knowledge graph. So there are tools which Wikibase import. And in a more um, quality assurance curation part, you have the entity schema tool, which is basically you define constraints for inserting the data. Let's say you want to insert uh, Alexim. <clears throat> but let's make sure that uh, Alexem is inserted only if it contains, if you, if the user provides a sense uh, in a different language and a form. So with this and also maybe the provenance, where this data come from, if it's a book, a resource, a website, a web page, something like this. So you can define this kind of uh, constraints in entity schemas and then users can uh, use those for inserting or ingesting data into your knowledge graph. And for the deployment part or the, the usage of the knowledge that is already into the knowledge graph, in the knowledge graph so there are a graphical user interface that can can be um, can can is that is uh, user friendly, that is similar to Wikipedia, as I said earlier. So you have, could have for instance the Lexem in the top and uh, the language and then like lexic lexical category and then you have sense you have forums and you can have more information on about this particular lemma or lexem in this case and also the graphical user interface allows to provide uh, examples of what the user would like to ask for instance puno quechua lexical entries so if the user just clicks there will get all the lexemes of the puno quechua so this can be provided to the users. It's like a kind of a answering questions, um, answering question system uh, within the uh, Wikibase ecosystem. Then you can also have some more advanced uh, query systems like Sparkwell, and so also uh, some exporting endpoints, APIs, and so on. For instance, if we want to query uh, specific data about some Lexems and we can generate a query using this uh, Sparkwell query language and then we can ask to the knowledge graph and it could reply and we can with the reply or with the uh, retrieved information we can build some nice applications so basically in this case we can we are showing a game where it asks has this Lixim a single or multiple senses and the user has the possibility to read the Lexem, listen the Lexem, and also some senses in different languages, and also the forms. So the user could answer single or multiple or not sure, and it could be community driven because after multiple answers, we can uh, validate this Lexem if it has a, a single or multiple senses. So this is the overall process of Kichwa base for building a knowledge graph for an under resourced language as a use case. So we follow this creation process uh, step where we identify sources and model the data. Then we host it in the Wikibase uh, software and host. And then we curate the data in order to ensure the quality of our knowledge graph. And then finally we deploy and allow anyone to download, to edit or to curate um, the knowledge graph. So what have been done so far? So Kichwa base is the Kichwa language and knowledge graph and talking about a little bit about the Kichwa language, it is a family of languages so it is mainly concentrated in South America. 
the purple color is the representation of the Quechua language however as you can see the green and the light green it's getting bigger because those green and light green are covering the other languages so probably if we don't take actions now the Quechua language will uh, will be uh, will lose the speakers and their communities so basically all the South America will be of only two colors Portuguese and Espanol and Spanish language so uh, in order to prevent this one approach is to build knowledge graphs and allow to to empower these communities and languages so uh, the Quechua language is spoken in across six countries in South America and, and but it's a family of languages as I said before and every uh, dialect or variant is specifically to one specific region and can be also uh, not be the same for instance in the in the south of Peru than in the north of Peru so there are differences among the communities and the places then uh, there is also the lack of language technology there is of course a general translator provided by some tech companies however they don't work on the manner or in on the best way because for instance as i said Kichu is a family of languages if you use the translator of google for putting an example it will translate but it doesn't know or it doesn't show which of the dialects are using for translating because it's it can be different for some dialects it could work but not for all of them then there are fonts and keywords in Quechua language they are not widely used as I as I could say and they are also not covered on interfaces so you cannot find for instance uh, Facebook on Quechua language or some TikTok or uh, social media platforms in, in Quechua language or in your language so this is an open question so there is also not covered on NLP task at least the Kitchen language there are some attempts of researchers to build NLP task and large language models in this sense however I think what is missing there is to build a infrastructure of a structured data well organized and that could empower the future researchers language learners and organizations to empower those communities otherwise everybody is doing their own research on their own and of course the social institutional aspects of the Quechua language also it's becoming very dependent on dominant language as is the Spanish language then also the Quechua language is not an official language in Peru but it is in, in Bolivia for instance and also it's becoming a minoritized community uh, in Peru because we are we have been uh, moved into the Andes and we are not really um, developing uh, around or with the Quechua in, in as, a, as a country let's say then we have the um, Quechua based interface so we already provide an interface in mobile re mobile mobile uh, version as well so anyone can access to this uh, to the Quechua base and ask about Lixims about the languages it will have some information, usage examples of some of the lexemes, and anyone can create a new item, uh, create a new property if you want to improve the ontology or the modeling of the data. Then also can uh, look on all the properties that exist already in order to be used or to to be to be created more. There are also query services where we can uh, ask queries and then. And we will get an answer about this queries and also another options like uh, some uh, tools that can support the creation of constraints for inserting data or constraints for ingesting data okay so what is uh, the so what we have in Kichwa base is around 1 million of statements mainly lexemes are stored there so nouns, verbs, adjectives. There are also around 20 Quechua dialects described and represented in Quechua base. There are also described with senses in English, German, Spanish, and Italian. And they are also accessible for by anyone 
in the kitschua.wikibase.cloud. So you can have a look there and see what we have done. And also you can um, request an account and you can start editing there. If you are from a different community of a different language, then you can also create your own uh, Wikibase uh, instance and then you can start to creating and modeling your language there, your knowledge graph. So this is uh, the interface and we are starting basically to for instance represent the numbers for instance this is the Quechua language for the number 4 it's a lexical category numeral and we have different representations for instance in a Quechua variant the number 4 would be represented differently than in those two variants so it's important to have these differences because not all of the Quechua variants are the same and they are not they don't have the same forms or they don't have the same uh, the, the same pronunciation as well so you you will have some senses and forms about this uh, lexemes as well and what we are adding now is the pronunciation audio for these lexemes we are recording voices for those lexemes so what we could have what we could do next uh, for under social languages uh, knowledge graphs how we can use them so once uh, we have the knowledge graph uh, developed for an unearthed languages it could be widely used on applications for instance the current knowledge graphs of Google Amazon and Facebook and so on they are well used and deployed on the web for instance if you uh, search for a person on Google you will find an information that is this structured knowledge this knowledge panels at the right side or this image this information that is very specific this is not um, random reasoning this is um, uh, extracted from a knowledge graph basically they are also uh, structured on a manner of knowledge graph but a knowledge graph of biographies a knowledge graph of places so this is possible once we have our knowledge graph in our language the second thing is like uh, if uh, I probably you realize if you have tried Siri, Alexa, and this personal assistance that your language or at least understood languages they are not present or they are not developed yet on this as as personal assistance because they don't have enough structured knowledge to build um, those chatbots. So, but if we have a chatbot that is built on top of a uh, a specific language knowledge graph then it could start to understand the language and start uh, could start to also to to speak in the language and regarding interfaces here I want to point out that there are some interfaces in uh, for under such languages but they are not uh, well deployed because there is for instance if you see here I look for a person and then the search engine, my search engine is basically in Quechua language and it presents information in English, in Quechua, uh, in English, in Spanish and it provides information about the Quechua, so about the, this person but in in uh, Spanish language however there is the, the Wikipedia article in Quechua language for this person so there is a, there is a um, a work that needs to be done so we we can also start to edit in this um, providing this information in our knowledge graph so the search engines can retrieve this information and could think okay look in, instead of uh, tools or instead of books there is a word in Quechua that we can use so mm, it could be improved so in conclusion so under research languages and knowledge graphs they could work well together it's not easy so in the technical side usually for under source languages the data is dirty so what it means that we have to do some pre-processing of the data we have to clean the data and sometimes we have to do some object uh, optical uh, recognition of the objects right so scan documents and so on then the modeling is also challenging but as, as you saw there is also attempts on different languages that has been done so we can reuse this modeling and start to work on this then it's important to familiarize with knowledge graphs if we want to build a knowledge graph for our knowledge graph for our 
own uh, under source language or for uh, uh, any language. So we have to understand concepts like a semantic web technologies and their standards. Then also it's not, uh, there will be always a human in the loop. So there will be always uh, um, users that will validate, that will reconcile, that will enrich the knowledge that we are producing in our knowledge graph. So it's important to keep in mind that the human will be always in the loop. And also when we talk about under-resourced communities, we are we, we, we should make sure to provide cost-sensitive methods. So we are in the move of open source, open data, linked data, so not providing expensive uh, services, host services or tools and so on. Uh, some challenges in the social aspect are, it's for an under research language, it's really hard to build a community on the online space or in the, in the digital space because it's not easy for a Kichu speaker, in, in my case, to become a user, an editor, or voice recorder. You have to have a background that helps you to um, use your language in a proper way with the technology because you don't, it's not easy to find this technology in your language. So the, the process is, is slow, but it could be done. The, and also we have to take care in the language status of our uh, communities on, on some under researched languages specifically because they are shifting from, um, I don't know, from active uh, community to um, shifting or to endangered and maybe in the future to become extinct. So we have to act now before it's too late. And also we have to bring awareness into the communities because if we, for instance, don't use uh, or don't demand the, the existence of interfaces in our mother tongues in under research languages, then nobody will develop them. So if we see that there are technology behind supporting, I don't know, Microsoft Office in your language or a search engine in your language, try to use them. Try to use them and probably they will, uh, that these companies will realize that there are also people that are using the services. So it would be nice to continue improving their, their platforms and interfaces. And perhaps the last remark is the web is for all, not only connect machines, but also, but people. So we, we should make sure that the web that is built nowadays belongs to everybody, to, to, to all of us, and not only certain communities or certain languages are represented there, but we all have the rights to be represented also there. I just want to acknowledge the support of the University of Innsbruck, the Wikimedia Foundation, the Wikitongs, Cost Actions, as well Nexus Linguario, Nunidive, and Kitchu Experience for letting me work on the Kitchu language and provide and develop this Kitchu knowledge graph for my community. Yupai chaiki, kai